Reading this book is a reminder of how versatile Kurt Vonnegut is. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Read the Right Thing Book Reviews. I'm Eric. Thanks so much for watching. Today, I'm going to review my yearly Kurt Vonnegut book. This year's is Cat's Cradle. So I read Slaughterhouse-Five in college, and then when I started this channel, I decided I would start with Vonnegut's first book and then subsequently read each book that he published. So I've already reviewed a few, and I'll link to those in the description. Kurt Vonnegut needs no introduction, especially on this channel. Vonnegut, to me, he's the king of satire and black comedy. I always look forward to reading his books. He's not only fun and easy to read, but I find his stories, characters, and ideas tend to linger in my head the longest. And I'm also aware that there are so many videos and reviews on Kurt Vonnegut and especially Cat's Cradle, so I'm just going to give a few of my favorite things about the book. Cat's Cradle is about the purpose of religion and science. Or maybe a better word is the futility of religion and science. Both of these play an important role for humankind. Science and technology makes our lives better and could save humanity, while at the same time could very well be the end of it. We understand more of what makes us and the world go around through science. Religion also plays an important role for humans. Religion promises everlasting life and happiness if you live a certain way and live certain morals and values. And even if it is a lie, is it really that bad if it makes us happier? If Cat's Cradle is one of Vonnegut's best books can be debated. However, even Vonnegut himself graded all of his books, and only two received an A-plus grade, Cat's Cradle and Slaughterhouse-Five. And so far, to me, I've enjoyed all of his books, but Cat's Cradle is Vonnegut at his best, writing about science and religion gone awry. Published in 1963, it is an incredible novel and piece of art. This book tells the story of Jonah or John, an author from Indiana, writing a book about the day the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. John will call this book The Day the World Ended, and it will be about what people were doing that day the bomb was dropped. Essentially, this character of John is just Kurt Vonnegut inserted into this world with a common biblical name. John and Kurt Vonnegut are both from Indiana, and they share common experiences and almost an identical biography. John's research about the atomic bomb leads him to the Honecker family. The deceased Dr. Felix Honecker helped create the atomic bomb. And it turns out this scientist is based off a real scientist that Kurt Vonnegut's brother knew, who worked at General Electric. In the book, Felix was a brilliant scientist who didn't concern himself with human relationships or normalities. He followed his curiosities and simply enjoyed life. When they tested the atomic bomb, a scientist told Felix, science now knows sin. To which Felix responded, what is sin? Science isn't good or bad, it's just science. Now the use of science can be good or bad. And what's good or bad anyway? What's good for one person might be bad for another. Felix treats life like a game, and he doesn't concern himself with the consequences of anything he does or creates. He's brilliant, but also completely irresponsible and aloof to anyone or anything that he's not interested in. So John writes letters to Felix's three children, hoping to figure out what Felix was doing that day. Newt, a midget, is the only one to write John back. He writes an incredibly elaborate letter that took him days to write. We learn Felix was playing with a cat's cradle the day the bomb dropped, and it terrified young Newt when his father held up the mess of strings and asked Newt, see the cat, see the cradle? Newt said it was really the first time his dad had ever paid attention to him. Newt also let John know that a lot of Felix's children were pretty messed up. John was under the impression that they were this illustrious, brilliant scientist family. Frank Honecker, who is the oldest brother, is wanted by the police. Their sister, Angela, is six feet tall and incredibly unhappy. And Newt, the midget, wrote to John that he was going to be married soon, but he ends up being swindled by a Ukrainian prostitute. John travels to Ilium, New York, which is a frequent Kurt Vonnegut setting, to hope to learn more about Felix Honecker. John goes on a tour with an acquaintance of Dr. Honecker's, a guy named Dr. Breed. And on this tour, John learns that Felix may have created something to help the Marines not get stuck in mud. Ice-9 was Felix's creation that would freeze anything it touches. It would help the Marines not get stuck in mud, but it would also end up freezing the entire planet. Dr. Breed thinks Ice-9 was never made, 
but John discovers that it was, and that all three of Felix's children are in possession of some of it. The night before John meets up with Dr. Breed, he gets more information about Felix from patrons in a bar. A hooker said Felix was supposed to give a commencement speech at her school, but he ended up missing it and Dr. Breed gave it instead. In the speech, Dr. Breed said, if everybody studied science more, there wouldn't be all the trouble there was. Which is funny considering where we know science takes the world in this book. John ends up spending the night with that hooker. And here's a part where Dr. Breed was driving him to the laboratory that showcases the style of the book and the style of Kurt Vonnegut. It's chapter 13, The Jumping Off Place. Ah, God, what an ugly city Ilium is. Ah, God, says Bakanon, what an ugly city every city is. Sleet was falling through a motionless blanket of smog. It was early morning. I was riding in the Lincoln sedan of Dr. Aza Breed. I was vaguely ill, still a little drunk from the night before. Dr. Breed was driving. Tracks of a long abandoned trolley system kept catching the wheels of his car. Breed was a pink old man, very prosperous, beautifully dressed. His manner was civilized, optimistic, capable, serene. I, by contrast, felt bristly, diseased, cynical. I'd spent the night with Sandra. My soul seemed as foul as smoke from burning cat fur. I thought the worst of everyone. And I knew some pretty sordid things about Dr. Aza Breed, things Sandra had told me. Sandra told me everyone in Ilium was sure that Dr. Breed had been in love with Felix Honecker's wife. She told me that most people thought Breed was the father of all three Honecker children. Do you know Ilium at all? Dr. Breed suddenly asked me. This is my first visit. It's a family town. Sir, there isn't much in the way of nightlife. Everybody's life pretty much centers around his family and his home. That sounds very wholesome. It is. We have very little juvenile delinquency. Good. Ilium has a very interesting history, you know. That's very interesting. It used to be the jumping off place, you know, sir, for the Western migration. Oh. People used to get outfitted here. That's very interesting. Just about where the research laboratory is now was the old stockade. That was where they held the public hangings, too, for the whole county. I don't suppose crime paid any better then than it does now. There was one man they hanged there in 1782 who had murdered 26 people. I've often thought somebody ought to do a book about him sometime. George Minor Moakley. He sang a song on the scaffold. He sang a song he composed for the occasion. What was the song about? You can find the words over at the Historical Society if you're really interested. I just wondered about the general tone. He wasn't sorry about anything. Some people are like that. Think of it, said Dr. Breed. 26 people he had on his conscience. The mind reels, I said. Following his trip to Ilium, John reads in a paper that Frank Honecker is going to be the new president of an island named San Lorenzo. So John flies to San Lorenzo and meets a cast of characters, including the Honecker children, the current dictator Papa Manzano, and also the most beautiful woman in the world, Mona. What follows depicts how man can make a damn mess of just about anything. Showcasing a fabricated religion on the island called Bakanonism, this book made me laugh, shake my head, and overall was just really fun to read. It made me laugh and shake my head to the similarities of religions we have. Reading this book is a reminder of how versatile Kurt Vonnegut is. He can write sci-fi, romance, satire, and black comedy, and is usually mixing all of these genres at once. They say it's hard to write things that are easy to read, and Kurt Vonnegut manages to write something so easy and so thought-provoking at the same time. There's no suspense or mystery to where the story is going. You know from the beginning the world is going to end. The fun part is getting there. The enjoyable part is watching all of these events unfold, the characters interacting, and seeing how greed and incompetence ruin the earth. And the entire time, John is just a witness, writing down his story. Every chapter has a sentence or two that showcases Vonnegut's great musings. The overarching theme of the book is stated in the beginning. A Bacchanalist Calypso goes, Live by the harmless untruths that make you brave and kind and healthy and happy. Incredibly wise words that come from a creator who says he's lying to everybody. The Calypsos and the religion of Bacchanonism was my favorite part of the book. The religion was created to give the poor people of San Lorenzo some form of purpose. The creator was trying to create a utopia. The religion is outlawed on the island as a ruse to allure more people to practice the religion. The thinking being that outlawed religions are more glamorous and attractive. If you're not supposed to do it, you want to do it more. A rumor spreads on the island that all those practicing Bacchanonism 
will be impelled and hung by a huge hook. So the creator, Bacchanon, is forced into hiding, adding to his mythology as the creator and prophet of Bacchanonism. The religion has its own goofy vocabulary, the island has a funny sounding language, and if you've read Sirens of Titan, you'll notice similar settings and a few recurring characters mentioned in passing. I think that Vonnegut believes humans should learn from history, but knows that we never will. This book was a real enjoyable read. I honestly didn't have any dislikes. So this book, Cat's Cradle, was the right thing for me. I always love reading Kurt Vonnegut. I'm sure I missed something. Like I said, there's plenty of reviews out there. I just wanted to give a few of my favorite parts. So if you've read this book, let me know what you liked about it in the comments. Please hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, read the right thing.